Hi, welcome to this short presentation on Sperry 1968. Background. Previous research using split-brain animals showed numerous behavioural effects. Other research by Sperry on both humans and monkeys, who had undergone surg surgical section of the corpus callosum, suggested the behavioural effects of this surgery may be less severe than other forms of uh, cerebral surgery, uh, e.g. frontal lob lobotomy. Research in 1944 also showed no important behavioural effects of surgical section of the corpus callosum in humans, provided other brain damage was excluded. More recent research by Sperry et al. using appropriate tests has actually shown a large number of behavioural effects that correlate directly with the loss of the neocortical commissures in man as well as animals. Sperry therefore set out in the study using split-brain patients to show that each hemisphere possesses an independent stream of conscious awareness and has its own separate chain of memories that are inaccessible to the other. Aim. The aim of this study was to investigate the effects that a commissurotomy, the severing of the corpus callosum, which is like a little bridge between the two um, hemispheres of the brain, has to show that each hemisphere of the brain has different functions. In other words, the researchers wanted to map lateralization of brain function and show that information in one side of the brain is not accessible to the other side. And here um, are the functions of each side of the brain uh, that you can have a look at if you want. Method. Method in design. The design was a quasi-experiment which compared split-brain participants with normal people in laboratory tests and compared case studies of all the individual patients. Participants. There were 11 split-brain participants who had already undergone a commissurotomy to treat status epilepticus, a severe form of epilepsy. The sample is thus an opportunity sample. Two of the patients had been operated on successfully some time before the experiments took place, whereas the rema remaining nine participants had only recently undergone surgery. Procedure. The equipment used in this study allowed for various types of sensory information to be presented to one hemisphere or the other, in different combinations. Visual information was presented by projecting images on a screen in front of the subject, the subject would sit, a, sit at a table with their hands hidden from their view behind the projection screen. Tactile information was presented to the participant's left or right hand, or to both hands, without the participants being able to see what the object was. The participants had to remain in silence unless asked questions by the experimenter, to avoid information being verbally passed from either hemisphere of the brain. This is what the apparatus looked like, so as you can see here is the projection screen, and his hands are underneath so he can't see what's going on down there. Visual investigations. The visual investigation uh, involves showing one stimulus at a time to one visual field, or showing two stimuli simultaneously to the two visual fields. Um, so for the one visual field tests, these tests uh, require the participants to cover one eye, and they were told to focus on a fixation point in the centre of the screen. An image would be projected for one tenth of a second or less, either to the left or right of the fixation point which would therefore send the image to the left or right visual field. The image was projected for such a short time to prevent the information going to the wrong half of the visual field if the participant moved their eye, which would cause the information to be processed by both hemispheres of the brain as there is an overlap in the centre of your visual field. Um, so here is a quick diagram you can pause and have a look at if you want. But as you can see, the right visual field goes to the left hemisphere, and so the left hemis hemisphere is dominant for verbal processing, and so they can say what they saw. Both visual fields. The participant would look at the fixation point on the screen while two images were flash flashed simultaneously either side of the fixation point. For example, if an apple was shown to the left visual field and a key was shown to the right visual field, the image of the key would be processed by the left hemisphere and the image of the apple would be processed by the right hemisphere. The participants would be asked to say what they had seen, and in, and in this instance, they would typically say key, although they would have no conscious awareness of seeing anything else. They would then be given a pen in their left hand and be asked to draw what they had just seen, either with their eyes closed or but with their hands out of sight. Typically, they would draw an apple, but when they were asked what they drew, they would say the key, the object that was presented to their right visual field. If they had uh, been shown the picture they drew, they would not have known that they drew it because the information about the apple had not gone into the left hemisphere, which contains speech production. 
tactile investigations. So for the one hand tactile investigations, the participant's hands uh, were hidden from view behind the screen. They were asked to find an object corresponding to what they had seen on the screen. The object is placed in one hand without the participants being able to see what they are holding and they are asked to identify what they have been given. For the last task, the object was placed in one hand without the participants being able to see what they are holding and instead of being asked to say what they had been given like in the previous task, they were asked to point to what they had been given. Uh, for the both hands, the participant works there with their hands out of sight. They are given two different objects, one in each of their hands, and the, then the objects are taken away. They are then asked to find the objects by touch from a pile of items. They are also asked to say what it is they have just held. Tests of the right hemisphere. The right hemisphere uh, of the brain does not produce language, and so in order to test if it has the ability to make mental associations, work logically, or experience separate emotions as opposed to the left hemisphere, the following tests were conducted. The left visual field, thus the right hemisphere, is presented with an object of, on the screen. The subject is asked to pick out similar objects by touch from, from an array of objects. Simple mathematical problems are presented to the left visual field. The participant is asked to sort the objects by shape, size or texture using their left hand. An array of geometric shapes is projected to both visual fields on the screen. In the middle of this section is a picture of a nude person, which is presented to the left visual field. The right, uh, the right hemisphere may respond non-verbally, thus revealing that it has processed the image. And as you will see in a sec, people actually giggled when they saw this nude person, and so it did convey that it had been processed by the right hemisphere. Results. Visual investigation results. Um, the visual st stimuli presented to one visual field. When the participants were shown an image in one visual field, they, on they would only recognise the image as one they had already seen if it was shown again to the same visual field. The reason for this is that the information had only been processed by one hemisphere of the brain, and so it had to be seen by the same hemisphere to know uh, what the object was. If an image was shown to the right visual field, the left hemisphere, the participant would be able to name what they saw and could identify the object from, from an array of pictures shown to the right visual field by pointing at to it, and could find it with their right hand from an array of objects. Visual stimuli presented to both visual fields. The participant would be able to see what they had uh, seen presented in the right visual field, but would seemingly be unaware that they had seen anything else. If they were given a pen in their left hand and were asked to draw with their eyes closed, they would draw what they had seen in their left visual field, and acted surprised when they realised what they had drawn. They would then uh, be able to name the object that they had drawn once it had been seen with their right visual field. Tactile investigations results. The results of the tactile investigations were the same regardless of whether the object was held by one hand at a time or by both hands simultaneously. The participant would have no issues identifying an object if it was placed in their right hand, but if it was placed in their left hand, they would have no conscious awareness of the object. However, they would be able to find the object by touch with the left hand in a bag full of objects. When the objects were placed in one hand, the participants uh, could point to what the object was with the same hand that they had held the object in. Conclusions This study gave support to the idea that the brain consists of two independent hemispheres, each with its own consciousness, and that there is no transfer of information between the two sides after a commissurotomy. For the participants studied, the dominant hemisphere was the left-hand side, which contained the speech centres. The final tests of the right hemisphere provide further evidence that the two hemispheres of the brain have their own consciousness, whereby one responds in a typic typically human way, i.e. by giggling at the nude, whilst the other has no idea what is going on. So here is this image again that I showed you earlier. Um, it's probably a good idea to go through it and see if you can understand what, it, um, what it's about. But... If you want to do that, then just pause the video. Otherwise, that is the end of this tutorial, and I hope you understood and made notes as you went along, and thank you for watching.